Hello, this is Matt on the Moon Lambeau channel. Attorney John Deaton, who of course is the attorney seeking to intervene in the SEC vs. Ripple case on behalf of over 22,000 XRP holders, he was interviewed live on television on Fox Business Network. And man, he did an excellent job slamming the SEC. Absolutely slamming the SEC live on national television. It was a true delight, and I love the fact that... Uh, this this highly consequential case, SEC versus Ripple, is getting finally some of the mainstream media's attention, which it so greatly deserves. And it's still amazing to me that uh, pretty well nobody else, no other mainstream outlet on the planet, in terms of television, is talking about this. And yes, you've had Forbes, Rosalind Layton has, has written some incredible pieces over the last nine months, roughly, uh, on this topic. You've had the New York Times cover it in at least one article. But off the top of my head, that's that's about it. And so to see Fox Business Network do it, like covering it, but not just a single story like, oh, no, 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 we're going to continue following this, dig into it, and having John Deaton on here to really get to the bottom of this, yeah, th th this is really something. This is what we've been, as an as, as XRP community members, this is exactly what we've been hoping for. And it's, it's too bad it took this long, but... Uh, you know, you can't just like snap your fingers and get the attention of the people that, uh, if they knew about it, might actually do something about it. But once once Charles Gasparino caught wind of this, oh, he was on it. He was absolutely on it. So I want to talk a little bit about uh, what was discussed in uh, in this this um, this television interview. I'll also link to the uh, a video of the interview. It's on John Deaton's YouTube channel, Crypto Law TV. You can type that in to find his channel. I will also, uh, at least I'll try to remember of that. I'll do my best uh, to, to put a link below in the description so you'll be able to just click on it after you watch this video. You're required to watch my video first. No, I'm kidding. You can do whatever you want. <laughs> but, uh, but yeah, you should definitely check it out. It's, it's only like uh, eight minutes or so. So anyway, I want to talk about this. I've also got a, uh, a legal update. There's a, another legal filing from Ripple. And uh, and it's just going to be a killer time all up in here on the Moon Nambo channel. But I also want to be clear at the outset, I do not have a legal or financial background of any kind. I am not offering legal or financial advice. And you definitely should not buy or sell anything because of anything that I say or write. I'm just an enthusiast who makes YouTube videos about crypto-related topics, but just as a hobby, just for fun, that is indeed all that's going on here. And so here's a tweet from John Deaton. Uh, I want to thank Charles Gasparino. Eleanor Terrett and Cheryl Cassone and Liz Clayman for inviting me on to discuss how 22,000 XRP holders are pursuing truth and justice. I look forward to continuing the conversation here. And so during during this interview, and it, it really was uh, basically Charles Gasparino and Don and John Deaton talking here. Um, you know, Deaton explained why he got involved, and he noted that he was absolutely outraged that on Christmas Eve 2020, he was reading a roughly 100-page attack on not just Ripple, because a, it's a legal complaint. This came in the form of a legal claim, complaint, but not just an attack against Ripple, but also XRP holders, and he was an XRP holder then and also now. And it was so outrageous. He was feeling the same things that, that we were feeling. I was in the, the earliest of days surrounding this whole thing. There was a whole lot more uncertainty back then. All sorts of people panic selling. And, and I can understand why. Because as much as I, uh, I preach and I, I will continue to preach that it makes all the sense in the world to not let emotions dictate whether or not you buy or sell. And I, I believe that even in this case, I will say that if ever there's a reasonable time to feel the emotions about something, it's this. Because this is the greatest attack on a cryptocurrency that the SEC has ever brought. It, it certainly has. And so certainly for people in the United States like myself, I'm in the Midwest in the United States, uh, the idea of every single United States-based ba exchange removing XRP was a real threat, and the vast majority of them did. There's only like th uh, three exchanges or so in the United States that still allow you to buy or sell uh, or hold XRP. Uh, well, okay, so a lot of them allow you to hold it there, but in terms of buying or selling, there's only a few places in the United States, and I, we didn't even know if there would be any. There was a chance that all of them could have gone away. And so I'm sitting here watching uh, individuals panic sell, and many of you were too, and we, we got news that all sorts of cryptocurrency exchanges, including Coinbase, they were halting the trading of XRP. Uh, there was no promise that there would be a place to sell XRP if you're, if, uh, if you're a United States citizen in the future or ever again. There was no guarantee. So if ever there was a legitimate time to feel some fear, like that was it. And so I was sitting there thinking, well, hell, 
uh, I'm not going to allow emotions to dictate what I do, but I did recognize, and I was obviously talking about it at the time on my channel too, I was like, well, there's a chance, <clears throat> there's certainly a chance that in the United States, I might not be able to sell an asset that I legally own. And, and like the thought of that is intimidating, but I also I also recognized in the moment, I was like, well, I, I, I don't have sufficient clarity uh, surrounding the implications of what all this means. In the earliest days, no, no, we were all doing our best to learn what we could and get opinions from those who would talk about it. But uh, we, we have a much stronger understanding of just how off the rails the SEC is. But we didn't have as strong of an idea quite back then. And so I just thought, well, I can't justify selling my panic selling my XRP right now when I don't have sufficient facts. So my, my stance right then was, I'm going to hold. And I don't know what that means. I don't know if it means I can never sell in the United States or if I'd have to go to another country at some point in the future if I want to sell. I knew nothing. But I was like, nope, uh, this could be, this could come back to bite me. And I recognize that, but I was like, I'm, I'm not doing it. And I just decided to hold on. And it was the right move. It was definitely the right move uh, because, well, a number of reasons. First of all, yes, uh, as we well know, at this point, in other cryptocurrency exchanges, there are, there are a few in the United States that still allow it to be traded. And also, more importantly, the SEC is so clearly on the wrong side of history here. I, I, I just, I, it's unfathomable the idea that uh, that the SEC could be victorious in this or that Ripple would be in a position where uh, they, they wouldn't be able to sell XRP, which they legally own, uh, or, that it w or that XRP wouldn't ever be allowed again to, to be traded in the United States. And you just wait, because I'm going to highlight too in this video, uh, the degree to which the SEC knew that they were causing harm to investors. I want to talk about that as well, because I'd be remiss not, not covering that here. But then uh, Gasparino, Charles Gasparino, he did a great job breaking down a lot of the basics of the case. And so you and I may be very well versed on a lot of the specifics going on here, because if you're listening to the Moon Lambo channel, you're like me, you love to get into the nitty gritty and follow the day-to-day -day minutia of all this stuff and the latest uh, development and all this. But you know, the, the Fox business audience likely isn't like that. It doesn't mean they're going to have the same niche interest as us. It doesn't mean that they're necessarily into crypto. Most people aren't into crypto. But uh, but that's also why it's great seeing this level of attention brought to the case. It's inter It should be, it better be interesting to anybody, even if you're not in crypto. Uh, it, it's, it, it's just... Think about all the corruption and stuff, too. And so, like, Gasparino said, you know what? Here's the rub. He said, Ripple used XRP to fund the development of its platform, RippleNet. And he says it's uh, it's a good platform, by the way. He actually said said that, which certainly is accurate. Uh, he, he, he praised Ripple's technology, proprietary te technology. He's not talking about XRP. He's saying the platform, and then in conjunction with XRP, sure. Uh, but he noted that uh, Ethereum used funds uh, from the public, Ethereum Foundation did, uh, and got a pass from the SEC. But these these two things, too, it's worth noting, they're they're not really quite equivalent. XRP using funds to build out uh, RippleNet, which is not a cryptocurrency, is different than uh, the Ethereum Foundation using funds to build out a, uh, a, a, a cryptocurrency and blockchain. Because that's what the Ethereum Foundation did. Because Ethereum didn't exist, okay? They, they It did not exist. Whereas with... Uh, Ripple and XRP, XRP, the XRP ledger, it was fully functional before Ripple, the company, existed. So they, when you're talking about using XRP funds to build out an, an, an infrastructure, an ecosystem, they were building out their company. They weren't building out something as if they, they ran an ICO. There never was. And so that's, that's a, a, a very important distinction. And then Deaton also noted that it's completely absurd that the SEC is claiming that uh, someone who buys XRP from Coinbase is now in a common enterprise with Ripple as a result of that. It's, it's always been a disgusting concept to me. There are so many people that jump into crypto and they buy XRP and they've never even heard of Ripple. The idea that they're now in a common enterprise with some company that they haven't heard and they're forced into it and everybody is the world over, not just people in the United States, it's all because of Ripple. What? It, it just, it it's beyond like... Uh, it, I don't even know how I want to work. It, it's it's be it's it's like imagine a creature that has like the uh, like ten percent of the capacity of like um, a stupid human, and and like basically that's the argument that you would expect from such a creature. That's bas and so that's what the SEC is putting out into the world. It doesn't make no damn sense, says Moon Lambo. And then Deaton also called out uh, Jay Clayton and William Hinman 
uh, you know, the conflicts of interest surrounding how they benefited from Ethereum's free pass from the SEC. And it was so refreshing to hear that spouted on, uh, on mainstream media. And so he did an absolutely fantastic job. And uh, attorney Jeremy Hogan, who, of course, runs the YouTube channel Legal Briefs, uh, saw this as well and, and said uh, on Twitter here, John Deaton was excellent. He represented his clients perfectly, was, uh, was empathetic, interesting, and nice blazer. He might have a new career blooming here. And indeed, uh, you can see here's a little screen grab of John Deaton with Gasparino. And that is a nice blazer. Look, that's a nice navy blue. I like that. Uh, and take, take a look at this. Now, this is from January, but the degree to which this is all disgusting, I think it's worth highlighting in a video like this. This is from Crowdfund Insider. Here's the headline. U.S. SEC was reportedly warned that investors may lose billions due to enforcement action against Ripple legal expert claims. And I don't want to read the whole article, but I just want to mention this. Because like, we go on to talk about Joseph Grunfest, who was, um, I believe he was, he was a commissioner at the SEC. I believe that's, that's accurate. And uh, he, he wrote a letter to Jay Clayton warning, hey, if you do this, you're going to cause multi-billion dollars worth of damage to, S to, to XRP investors. And so you, you got to see, you're wondering, why the hell would they do this if their mission is to protect the investor? Because that's you and me, right? We're the investors, aren't we? Right. So their, their mission is supposed to be to protect us. Well, if they wanted to protect us, and if they're not claiming that XRP, by the nature of it existing, is a security, then why would you not make sure that you protect the investors by telling exchanges, hey, no, 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 we're just going after Ripple for the way that they sold XRP, not XRP itself, by the nature of it existing, because they could have done that, but they didn't. And that tells you a lot of what you need to know surrounding their intent here. It's completely disgusting. Uh, and then as far as the most recent developments, uh, James K. Filan on it again uh, Ripple, uh, they're going to have a response to the, the SEC document that was filed just the other day. And I, I literally yesterday I made a video about this topic. You're going to have to check it out. It was on the um, the request for admissions. Um, and so a request for admissions in a, in a legal setting. And this is something that, look, I don't pretend to be a legal. Like I'm learning the, the legal stuff in real time along with like the vast majority of you because most of us are not lawyers. But in a case, apparently, uh, you can just have a bunch of requests for admissions which states a bunch of things pertaining to the case, and then you just get a yes or no answer, and that way you don't have to introduce a bunch of evidence. Uh, it's supposed to make things more streamlined in court, and so if both sides agree, yeah, it's worth it to just acknowledge this because it's not particularly consequential, or maybe it is even, but, but either way, just to try and get some sort of clarity on certain things, and that apparently that's just, just what you do here. And so uh, in a video yesterday, I highlighted this because uh, Ripple is seeking almost 30,000 requests for admission, and the SEC is not happy with that. Uh, and so they have a number of complaints about that. And here's a few quotes. This is highlighted from a piece in a piece by AMB Crypto. And shout out to XRP Crypto Wolf, by the way, who sent this article to my Twitter inbox, XRP Crypto Wolf. You know, man, thank you very much for continually sending me all sorts of incredible articles. Very helpful. I do appreciate it. But, um, and I just want to highlight a few quotes from the SEC that were covered in this piece. Uh, here's one from the SEC. Uh, the requests impose an extreme, disproportionate, and unnecessary burden on the SEC and would require months of sustained work by the SEC's counsel in order to prepare appropriate responses. And so there you go. There's the SEC being a bunch of baby back uh complaining about how long it would take to respond. And I made this point in the video just yesterday, and Jeremy Hogan brought it up as well, which is that, f frankly, like the SEC did this to themselves, right? Like, they allowed Ripple to do what they're doing for the better part of a decade, which means that there's all sorts of uh, transactions that uh, need to be addressed here as a result of this, transactions over a span of almost a decade. And they're also claiming, the SEC is, that all transactions, even today, after the lawsuit were filed, they're all part of uh, an unregistered securities offering of Ripple. So, you know, there wouldn't be 30,000 requests for admission if you would have just taken care of this in a timely manner, like over half a decade ago. How about that? Uh, and it's just astonishing that, uh, like, of course there's a crazy amount. <laughs> and then they also, these requests are also disproportionate because they would impose a crushing burden on the SEC, and it is unclear how defendants would ever use the SEC's responses at trial or on summary judgment. Uh, they also said, many of these requests also seek admission 
about statements the SEC cannot reasonably verify or events for which the SEC has no firsthand knowledge, including the actions of third parties who are not witnesses in this case. Uh, right. And so here's what Ripple had to say. So, and I am glad they, they're going to respond back. They're going to punch back. I can't wait to see this. I will be covering it in a future hot jam on the Moon Lambo channel as soon as it's available. So don't, for, don't forget to bring your toast. Spread that hot jam all over that biatch. Uh, but here's what they wrote. It's very short and to the point. Dear Judge Nepper, we write on behalf of Ripple Labs, Defendant Ripple Labs, Brad Garlinghouse, Chris Larson, uh, pursuant to part IG of the court's individual practices and with the consent of the SEC to request that the deadline for the defendant's response to the SEC's letter motion to con for conference uh, to seek a protective order against excessive requests for admission be extended for two business days from Tuesday, October 5th, 2021 to Thursday, October 7th, 2021 and uh they just the, the reason for this is they're going to assuming this is granted they're going to write a scathing response rightfully so and i can't wait to see what that is i really can't wait to see what that is because the sec they just like the, the claims that they make the audacity they have it doesn't take a legal professional to understand that they're just making up a bunch of crap and they're seeing what the hell sticks which is why if I'm the judge, I'm feeling like at some point, like, oh, you don't think I'm stupid, right? Like, I'd be thinking that in my head, basically. Uh, it's, it's like you're, you're testing the judge's intelligence at this point. It's, it's that ridiculous. It really is that ridiculous here. Nobody believes your stupid positions. It's a bunch of crap. It's illogical. It's unethical. And you're, I don't like you. You're on my enemies list. There we go. All right, I'm going to go ahead and wrap up there, though. I am not a financial advisor. You should not buy or sell anything because of anything that I say are right. That would be a very, very, very bad idea. Until next time, to the moon, Lambo.